Walter Scott was a powerful and very influential gospel preacher in the early 1800s. He was a friend of another powerful and influential gospel preacher by the name of Alexander Campbell. Well, one time, Scott decided that he would travel from his home in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, over to rural Washington County, Pennsylvania, and visit with and spend a Sunday with Campbell at the Brush Run Church. He found the church service to be quite lengthy, as every male member of the church was called upon and asked to deliver a portion of a sermon. After many long hours had passed by and all had spoken, Scott was asked to close out the service to make the final address, which he did. But whether he was hungry for his dinner or was worn out by the length of the service, his remarks, though quite pointed, were rather testy. He stood before the congregation and he said, My brethren, my Bible tells me that the church is like a human body, of which one member is a foot, another a hand, another an eye, and still another a mouth. That, in fact, it has or should have as great variety in its membership as the human body has. But I regret to see that you have reversed all of this. For you have here a church with but one single member. You have, in fact, a church that is all mouth. Now this account is rather humorous, but it does illustrate a very important point for us. Not everyone in the church needs to be carrying out the same works. Of course, there are some things that all Christians should be doing, things like worshiping, praying, Bible study, personal evangelism. However, there are other things like public teaching that does not have to be done by everyone. James wrote, Let not many of you become teachers, my brethren, knowing this, that as such we will incur a stricter judgment. James 3 and verse 1. When Paul addressed the activities that were done in the church at Corinth, he wrote, Let two or three prophets speak, and let the others pass judgment. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 29. There may have been more than two or three who could have spoken, but they were to put a limit upon this. Not every one needed to speak. In a situation like the one that I described at the Brush Run Church in which every male member got up to speak, it is possible that every male member was capable, was a, a, a public speaker and had a message to proclaim. But it is probably more likely that a few were capable and the rest were ill-equipped for the task. In either case, I want to give you just a few points to consider today. First, the assembly is to be conducted in a way that it is properly and in, in an orderly fashion, 1 Corinthians 14 and, verse, or 14 and verse 40. And that allows those who are present to be edified, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 26. This means that those who are ill-equipped at teaching do not need to be called upon to do so when there are other capable teachers present. It would certainly be good for such men to develop their skills and learn to do this, but the assembly is not necessarily the best place for this initial training and for this practice to take place. Secondly, not everyone who can teach needs to teach at the same time or in the same assembly. Paul told the Corinthians, let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. It is a good blessing, a wonderful blessing, to have several men who can capably preach and teach the gospel in the local church. We're blessed with several men at Pyburn Street who are able to do this. But they can do so in turn, rather than thinking that everyone needs to speak in one long, protracted assembly. Also, if the church has an abundance of capable teachers who are regularly competing for speaking opportunities, one option may be for some of those men to go and to assist some smaller, struggling congregations. Rather than having all of them remain there and compete with each other and not use the abilities that they have, then they could go and to preach elsewhere. 
In many places, especially in the United States, if a congregation has an abundance of capable preachers, Bible class teachers, song leaders, then there may be a congregation not far away that is lacking in such individuals. For one or more of these individuals to decide to work with one of these other congregations and make use of their talents in that way would be a huge asset to that smaller congregation. Now regardless of the capabilities of the speakers, the way in which the assembly was conducted during the account that I shared with you other earlier was unnecessary. There is plenty of work for us all to be doing both inside and outside of the assembly, and let us all be committed to doing the Lord's work in whatever capacity we are able, while always striving to improve and expand our abilities to fulfill the needs that exist around us. Friends, we thank you for joining us today, and may you have a blessed day.